It was offensive. It was hateful. And particularly for him to make the statement here in Manhattan, uh, just, uh, just a little north of Ground Zero, uh, where family... The CIA was keeping an eye on 14 of the 19 hijackers, such as Mohammed Atta in Hamburg, without the Germans knowing it. Unknown to the FBI, other secret services were active too. Later, it became clear that the U.S. Army leadership knew long before the attack about the identity and whereabouts of the leading hijacker, Mohammed Atta. Intelligence officers were prepared to share this information, but the Ministry of Defense put a stop to that. The first hijack uh, occurred latest about 8.20 a.m. For the next hour and 40 minutes, no aircraft was put into the air, even though there was at the U.S. Uh, Andrews Air Force Base, uh, 10 miles from Washington, D.C., a flight of F-16, a whole squadron uh, of top-level fighters. Uh, no planes were flown in from other air bases, um, even though at top speed they were certainly within range. Why did that happen? We know that where an aircraft goes on course, it is a legal requirement uh, that aircraft are put into the air to check on the position and purpose of commercial aircraft. Why on this single day did it not happen? In the previous nine months, it had happened 67 times. It was a routine procedure. Why did this not happen on that very important day? That question has never been answered. To summarize, 11 countries warned about an attack on the United States. The CIA received a list with 200 suspects before September 11th. Security advisor Condoleezza Rice warned the president about a hijacking. The United States government ignored warnings by several FBI agents. Mohammed Atta had been identified as a leader of an al-Qaeda cell in 2000. Defense did not give out that information. After the hijacking, it took 100 minutes for the first fighter jets to take off. Remarkable facts. Had the independent investigators of the September 11th attacks nodded off? It was a 580-page avoidance of any serious explanation. If you look at it, and of course I have, only the first chapter goes into uh, looking at what actually happened at 9-11 and leading up to it. All the rest, which is far and away the great majority of the report, is not actually about 9-11 as such at all, but it is about the kind of alternative arrangements or preparations that America needs to make in future to avoid it happening again. And indeed, there is one statement it makes which I think sums up the whole report. It is widely known and believed uh, that uh, Lieutenant uh, Mahmoud Ahmed, uh, who was uh, the head of Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence, the ISI, uh, asked a known Islamic militant called Omar Saeed Sheikh to wire $100,000 to Mohammed Atta, the leading hijacker, uh, in the period leading up to 9-11. That has since been confirmed uh, by the FBI. What the report, uh, the official investigative report uh, says, uh, is that the US has never been able uh, to find the, uh, the sources of financing for 9-11. And then they say this, that after all is a matter of no great importance. I find that astonishing. It is a matter of absolutely central importance. So there was a very great deal of evidence, and it is, seems to me extraordinary that the United States, uh, with its stupendous military capabilities and the most technologically advanced country in the world, completely and totally failed to follow up these leads. I think that 9-11 provided uh, the trigger to enable the US administration under George Bush to put in place a geopolitical strategy uh, to seek American control. They made sacrifices. Most likely, it's an operation in psychological warfare. It's a form of war, and in a war, it's acceptable when people die. 
even on your own side. In this deception, killing is allowed to achieve a higher goal. All that I can say is, let other people make their judgments about 9-11. If they think that the war on terrorism explains it, I would like to know why all the facts about the failure to respond before, at, and after can be explained. If they needed a trigger, then finding that an attack was planned was an exceedingly convenient pretext. And I think they used it. Governments, and people don't like to think of this, governments can be ruthless. They only think in terms of power. Democracy and constitutional states don't play a role. That's the philosophy behind it, which unfortunately is shared in the United States by both parties. People with moral objections don't stand a chance. The truth is conspiracies do sometimes occur. In history, there's no doubt about that. When you look at that evidence, it is so compelling, so comprehensive, that it is very difficult, in my view, to come to a different conclusion from the one that I do. What was the September 11th attack other than an attack? Was it the great disruption the conservatives were waiting for? Enabling this new, more aggressive United States policy now there is public support in the United States for a war in Iraq and Afghanistan and threats towards Syria, Iran, and Korea. A cynical politician might say, every disadvantage has an advantage. They are facts. They're uncomfortable facts. They're shocking facts deeply, deeply shocking, but you have to face up to them because they have actually happened and they demand an explanation which is the most cogent, the most compelling, the most plausible to fit those facts. We do need to know the truth. We do need to know the truth. It's not about justice, it's not about agenda, it's not about mobilizing people, it's about dialing for corporate dollars. These two parties have sold the U.S. government and the American people to the highest bidders. Ha, 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 ha.